we're doing video again, and this week is going to be really interesting because, ta-da, look who came Hello. back. <laughs> Miss Kate. Kate. Hi. She's back. Miss Kate is a jewelry scientist. She likes to get into the nitty-gritty of how this works. And, oh, here we go again. We have to allow this. Hmm. I'm going to start playing the... Carmen song. Carmen Ryan. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, from the opera, Carmen. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, enough of that. All right. So we're going to do etching this week because she's actually quite the little expert about it. And it's going to be a beginning etching on brass video. And in this video, you're going to learn everything beginning to end, how to do it. And you're going to find out it's so simple, so easy, but you do have to be safe. There are some precautions. We can't guarantee your results. It's up to you to be safe and do things properly, to read your MSDS on your product, to choose your product carefully. We're just recommending. But uh, Kate's going to talk to you a little bit about the stuff that you need to be safe. So what, right. what do you need to be safe? One, you want to be wearing clothing that, uh, in case you splash or get some of the etching on you, that um, it absorbs on your apron or old shirt or whatever. The second thing you want to have is multiple pairs of these vinyl disposable gloves available. You need to have a non-metal work surface, which I always cover with some uh, the white inexpensive trash bags. You'll see that when we come mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. And you also will need to have an optimum temperature in around 70 degrees uh, for the etchant to work uh, properly and not take and take the you know the time frame works better. And good ventilation, if you can etch outside, or in a great big pole barn, or if you have windows and doors open, that kind of thing, it's really important. It is a chemical. It is not, um, you know, a, a highly toxic chemical, but if you're working with bleach, you're not going to do that in a small little room, so the same thing. And don't do it in your closet. No, don't do it in your closet. It's not a good thing to do in your closet. Yeah. And keep some, or have a source of soap and water nearby. If you do splash some on your skin, um, you want to neutralize it, so you put a little baking soda on it, and then you go wash with soap and water, and you're fine. You don't like splash it on yourself and think, oh, I'll go wash this off later, right. because if it eats through metal, imagine what it's going to do to you. Well, it right? might have a little bit of burning yeah. sensation, and then you might get a rash, yeah. but it's not going to eat through your skin. Well, it's that's just, good to know, but yeah. still, I wouldn't leave it on. I wouldn't leave it on. Get it off. No, I wouldn't leave bleach you, on my hand right. either. You know, right. Yeah, I wouldn't you leave could bleach even, Could you maybe have some baby wipes nearby or something? Or is it better to go wash it off? It's better to wash it off. Okay. Wash soap and water. Clean okay. soap and water. Rinse good okay. and you're good to go. So do you think we've told them everything now? For the safety? I think so. Well then, you know what I say next. Get on over here, because we're going to show you how it's done. All right, um, I'm going to start with uh, showing you what we did to prepare the brass. First, we washed it with soap and water. Then we gave it a little bit of tooth with some real fine steel wool. And then, for purposes of this video, we used Stazon black stamping pad. Which we, ca we carry at bcboutiques.com. And we also used the Sharpie uh, fine point as well as the extra fine point black ink and we use some rubber stamps and sometimes you might have rubber stamps that don't have backs so what I did was found this neat little trick where I took some tape rolled it around put it on the stamp get my ink on then I go like that on my metal and pull it off and go ta-da I don't have a mess. No I so. should have done that. <laughs> I, didn't cheat. I didn't teach that trick to you. Yeah you were holding out on me. I was holding out on you. So I'm going to move these over to the side because we did these earlier and they're good and dry. So that's the other yeah, thing that's you want to do. That's very important. They it have to be. Dry. They have to be hard, really good and dry. Okay, and now here's how you want to have your work station set out before you start work, filling anything up with etch it and, and paper. Paper. Etch it and water and baking soda. The etch it will go into these containers because we're going to use two today. And the Please. etch it is the chemical, right? Kate? Yes, that's the um, ferric chloride chemical. We're using a uh, particular brand MG known as chemicals. MG Chemicals and uh, it uh, I find that in my experiments that has been had the least amount of odor and it's the least corrosive um, and if you were working with bleach you'd want to take some of the same precautions as you would with this ferric chloride so the, the and it's referred to the etchant because that's the 
chemical that will actually eat at the metal and make some of it go away. And I'll explain that a little more later. And then we have what's known as a baking soda neutralizer. So when you're done etching, when you feel that your etch is deep enough, then you have to neutralize and stop the etching process by putting your metal into the neutralizer. The neutralizer consists of baking soda and water. I always keep extra water next to me in case I need to rinse or just to do, you know, the process here. I also have popsicle sticks. I get these cheap little things from the dollar store, little tongs. And I can't, and blue painter's tape. That's important. Mm -hmm. Blue painter's tape is also very important. I have a timer. We need a timer. I keep a plastic bag on it because that way when I set the timer and I have my gloves on, I don't have all this brown stuff on my timer. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't stress enough gloves, disposable gloves. I'll pro you'll probably see me change gloves four or five times throughout this process. I, safety, safety, safety. Mm -hmm. Some fresh, clean rags laying around. You'll see how we use those. An old toothbrush. Again, I've marked that poison. I don't want anybody to ever brush teeth with that. And I have a, a wire, a small wire brush, too. You even marked the action stuff. Yes, and I marked with the Mr. Yuck, you can get them. Where did you say you got You can get these free at, at your uh, local drugstore or right. hospital or anywhere that they, they're wanting to provide you um, something to keep your children safe. They have safe. the 1 800 poison. And they have the 1 800. Plus, kids are familiar with Mr. Yuck. They know, uh oh, that's, that's not good. They've been taught. So, if you have stuff in your workshop that's not too good for kids, put Mr. Yuck stickers on. Yeah, it'll be really wise. Yeah. And I also have toothpicks. So, that's really all you need here. All of these are really, really inexpensive. You can get them at dollars like stores. And uh, so, from there, Let's get started. We have, our, we have our metals ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is create our neutralizer. So what I do, and it's not an exact science for me, but you know, this looks like about a quarter cup of baking soda. Another quarter cup of baking soda. This is from an old, you know, something I salvaged from other things that came into the kitchen and from there. Water, usually about a cup. I might put a little more. Again, this part's not exact science at all. Yeah, all right. You'll work it out. Yeah, it's just, you know, I know about how much metal I'm going to be using, so it gives me a sense of how much I want for the neutralizer. And again, the neutralizer stops the process of etching. And see, I spilled a little bit. I splattered a little bit. That's why you wear protective clothing. That's why I have paper towels down here. Okay, now we got the neutralizer in. The next thing I'm going to do, and I'll bring this over here to show you, but before I do that, on go the gloves. It. Anytime, gloves on. anytime you touch the etchant, the etchant bottle, the etchant container, the metals in the etchant container, on go the gloves. I'll tell you what, I'll glove up too. That way, if I need to hand you something, I'll be ready okay. to go. Okay, sounds good. All right. Now, personally, I prefer to pour my etchant first. So that's what we're going to do, because that's a personal preference of mine. doesn't have to be very deep. What is that, maybe a quarter inch? Maybe a quarter inch, maybe a little more than. I happen to know we've got some big pieces, so I'm yeah. going a little deeper. Your etchant solution is something that can be reused as long as, now see how I drip there? It's a real good example of why you need gloves, why you need protective areas. It just got soaked up by the paper mm -hmm. towels, no big deal. Now I'm gonna wipe that on there too because I'm gonna move it back over here. All right, that's your etchant. This is your neutralizer. Now I'm going to get my metal Definitely. ready. It's already dry and it's already so um, this is, stamped and dry. These are brass blanks from bsuboutiques.com. All the brass in this video is from bsuboutiques.com. Now, the etchant, you're going to have to go online and find it. Just MG Chemicals, do a Google search, you'll find a ton mm -hmm. of links. We don't sell mm -hmm. that stuff, but it's easily found. MG Chemicals etchant is different from PCB etchant. 
So, um, which you can, is the Radio Shack? Which right? is the Radio Shack brand? So, do know that. And, it, and, and why is it that you like MG better? Okay. It has um, the Material Safety Data Sheet (MSDS) um, gives you all the chemical properties, um, how to handle safely, um, a lot more information about that chemical. This has a what a lower odor, um, less of um, toxicity. Le less toxicity. So I prefer the the least, and it still and it does works a good job. Great, because when Kate was here last time, and we etched, although we didn't show our experience with you till after, through my blog, um, the fact is, is it did a fine job. Yes, it does a fine job. So I just stick with. You know, if it does a fine job, I'm going to get something that is the least toxic Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. So I don't know if you can see this, but I put one of the pieces of brass that we have the dried, um, um, oh goodness, ink already on it. I put it on a piece of blue tape. And what I did was made what I call a cradle. I roll, I bent over the tape on each end, so I've got little handles. And now I will turn that tape upside down on my plastic and I will burnish this with a so popsicle important. stick. Yes, if you don't cut, you have to cover the areas of the metal that you don't want the etchant, the ferrochlor ferrochloride to react it with. So that's the main purpose of having this lovely design on here because I don't want the ferrochloride to react with the black ink and that leaves me that pretty design later on. You don't so, want to react with the back of it. Either. With the back of it either, because then it eats through both ways and you could end up with holes in your metal, which if you want that, I suppose that would be all right, but I don't want that to No. So now I'm going to take it like this, and I'm just going to put it down in the bath, and I'm going to leave little sides up. So you've got little tabs so you can grab it. Yeah, so you can kind of take it in, and you can take it back out. I just did that backwards. You can put it in, and then you can take it back out. And then you can put it back in. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's one and piece. We'll do the key. And yes, we'll do the key next. It's a smaller. And this key is um, base 04343. It's a key blank from basuperteeks.com. Right. Now, because I'm using three inch wide um, tape, which I prefer to use, and look at the, my glove stick in here. You will have that. Anyhow. Mm -hmm. Probably several of you will do it better and say, well, I'm not going to put my gloves on when I do that part. And I'll go, yeah, you're right. It's probably a good idea. We always say that. If you know a better way, fine, share it with yeah. us. So long as you share it kindly and informatively, we are happy to hear from you. Now, you're wondering, why did she do that? Well, when I put this in the ferric chloride bath and share this bath with my key, I don't want my key to overlap on the other piece of metal. Oh, you so don't sorry. want your metal to overlap, okay? Mm -hmm. So we put the key on here, turn it upside down, burnish, burnish, burnish. Okay. Check yep. that, ready to go. Yep, yep. And gently down in it goes. Because I'm not one to want to splash this stuff around. There's no reason to do that. No. Okay, now we're going to do a bigger piece. Did you want to do this one? Well, let's do this one. Where's that one? This one here? Yeah. I yeah. want to see how that comes out with the writing. Now this is a handwritten one that Brenda Sue did. And that is base 01790 from the Bruce Boutique's website. Which is, we've used that in assembly a ton of times. Mm -hmm. and may, we used it in the tissue decoupage videos, the resin video last week. We used it. It's a very, very popular <laughs> Well, you can etch it too. All right, y'all. I'm going to take these off. Take them off for a minute? Yeah, for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> do my blue tape. Because it's, it's very hard to work with yeah, those on the blue tape. We'll be here all day and all night. Yeah, you will. And everybody will be out there laughing too. Going, that video was too long. No, they'll be going, oh, look at her sticking. Doesn't she know she could take her gloves off right now? All right, I'm centering that on there nicely so I can turn it over and finish it. Yeah, we have the uh, oval blank, we have the key, and we have the crescent. And they all began with raw brass, which we used 
We scrubbed with Jungle soap and water. Line. You bet. Which we scrubbed with soap and water. Then we gave it a little tooth with some fine, very, very fine steel, steel wool. wool. Let them dry completely. And now, there it goes down in here. I'm going to do something I do. I'll push that down in there. Because you got gloves on. I got gloves on. It's not going to eat my gloves. It's not going to eat through my gloves. gloves off now, right? Now, while I'm waiting, first though, I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you. I put a plastic bag on my timer. You do need a timer. And I do that because I got gunk on my gloves most of the time. So I'm going to time this for 15 minutes. And that way I can take the bag off later and I don't have a dirty timer. So, so we're going to check it. this every 15 minutes? Every 15 minutes we're going to take a look. So I um, guess we'll get back we'll with you We'll take a all. break now. We're going to let it etch. And after it's etched, we'll come back with some more and tell and you what, you know, of our findings from that, show you how to neutralize and to finish. And then you take those gloves off and right into the trash yes. they go. And have your trash plastic lined so that, um, you know, everything stays safe. Okay. All right then, back soon. Hi everybody, we're back. The timer went off and I'm going to be putting on a pair of clean gloves because my other ones I got rid of. They had etching on them. They were yucky. They were yucky. I'm going to get myself a toothpick and I'm going to pull this big piece out of the water here. And I'll kind of show you how. We're checking to see how deep the etch is. Yes. If you, you can see here, the um, resist the black ink is still there and it should be. And what I'm going to check and see if I feel a ridge between where the black ink is and where the raw brass is. The raw brass will end up being below where the resist is. So that's why I'm feeling a bit of it. I'm feeling an edge and that tells me my etching is working. I don't know if you can hear that little click click but that's an, that's an edge. So I'm liking that but I would like it to be deeper so I'm going to put it back in the etching solution and then I'm going to take my timer in this plastic bag and I'm going to set it again. This time I'm going to set it for about 30 minutes and um, then we'll come back and check it again. Oh, one last thing. I almost forgot. Since I do have etching on my gloves, this is really the best way to take them off inside, you pull them inside out of themselves, pull them from here, turn them inside out, and you got something nice and clean to throw away. See why Kate is doing this video? She's so thorough and so prepared. <laughs> we want you to be too. We'll be back in about half an hour. Okay, we're back. The timer's gone off again. It's now been a total of 45 minutes that we have had our pieces in the etching solution. So what I'm gonna do I'll show you how these little tongs work too. They look pretty, pretty good. I found them for like four in a package for a dollar at the dollar store. I love the dollar store. All right, here's what it looks like right now. You start to see the etching solutions brown. It's not the, it is not the brass. The brass is still brass, okay? So don't let that worry you. The, uh, the black resist is still there. So what's happening is that area is now higher than the raw brass. And I just broke my toothpick, so I'll just grab myself a little another toothpick. No big deal. I want to use, and I have my gloves, so this is just fine. Not hurting. Is it myself. deep enough? Yeah. Well, it feels pretty nice. It looks like it's stopping there when mm -hmm. you're poking it with your toothpick. It's, it's it like it's toothpick. stopping it. Yeah. So, so there's a ridge. There's a nice little ridge there. So I'm going to put it back in for a second. Not gonna hurt now it. Now look at the other one. Let's yeah. take a look at the other ones. Now I'm gonna get another toothpick. I should be over there grabbing them right here. I'll go nah, get, now I've got I'll go get some gunk on me. All right, here's the uh, oval piece. A booger to go. Ah, it's got a booger on it. Let's hope not. <laughs> All right, here's a nice ridge on this one. Real nice. Ridge. Oh, that's done. Yeah, we can say that's done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've decided that one's done. So here's something I have figured out, makes it easier for me. Before I used to take these and put the whole thing into the neutralizing solution. And it made a lot of fizz and fuzz and made my neutralizing solution get um, brown sooner and full of the etchant sooner. So I decided, why should I do that? So I turned this upside down. Oh, you're too tricky. Uh, well, this calls practice. 
and I'm sharing my little tips with you. Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing about etching, too, is to get somebody to share you the tips. Yeah. You, you can figure out how to do it yourself, but yeah. the thing is, is if you get somebody to show you the trick, trash she's throwing it in trash. And into the off. neutralizing solution. Now, what you'll see when I first put it in here, and I want to bring this over so you can see it really well, is it'll start to, like, fizz a little bit. And what that means is the etching solution is now literally the acid in it is being neutralized so that it's nothing more than rust water. It's not alka seltzer. It's not. <laughs> little, no, it's not alka seltzer. So I would put that piece in there and I might as well just put the rest in there because they're looking pretty good. Yeah. But, um, you know, so you, just you don't shake out. it. You don't, you know, yeah, don't. don't shake it. Don't splatter it. Don't do any of those things that and, you don't have Kate, to. We didn't do any agitating either. Some people say you got to agitate. But the only thing I ever agitate is myself. Or maybe, I get maybe, agitated. Maybe, maybe Mr. Mike once in a while. Mike gets me agitated. I get him <laughs> agitated. Those things happen. But now I don't, you know, we I haven't got into that. We didn't agitate last time either, and we, we yeah. had no problem getting it to. That, Listen. That's good. Listen. You hear that? Yeah, that one's that good. That tells you Ruffles has bridges. Yep. Okay. Now, you put several pieces in here. I do want to make um, a point here. If you are etching with copper and brass, you etch your copper always separate from your brass mm -hmm. or any other metals. You don't, don't mix up. them because they interact with each other mm -hmm. in the in a not, not positive way. Yeah. So. But we're only doing brass today. And we're only doing brass today, but I did want to mention that in case you want to continue So what are you going to do with that? Are we going to take it out? You oh, think it's good? I think so, too. I think it is. So I'll just turn it upside down here, too. And the reason you're seeing the etching on here on the back is because when I pull the tape up, of course, mm, it's yeah. spilling over. Oh, but you'll the rinse tape that was right solid. Off. Yeah, that'll rinse or, or yeah. Um, it'll actually... Uh, yeah, there's no etching going on. There's no etching it's having gone on It's just a little stain back. from the stuff when she pulled it up. That's it. And I decided to put into two, do two baths because it takes, you know, yeah, cleans up better. But see the fizzing? See the bubbles coming up. Yeah, see a little bit of fizzing action? Pretty nifty, huh? Yeah. And you're saying, well, how come it's still black? I'll show you. I'll show you. But first, the other, and one more other thing I want to say is, now I've had my fingers in the neutralizer. I do not want to put them back anywhere near the etchant, or mm -hmm. I will contaminate the etchant so that it doesn't have the strength. You can't use it anymore. And you can't use it anymore. So now I'm going to change my gloves, like I showed you before and put them in the trash. I got achies on. And we're new gonna, gloves. New gloves. New gloves. I told you earlier, yep, I go she through. She went through five pairs. Yeah, and I'll probably go through even more than that. So always, they're cheap. They're cheap safety. So I'm gonna start with this piece here. And you can see there's kind of an orangey color to it. That's part of the etchant solution still on there. And then you have the black the black ink. Well, I don't want that black ink to stay. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of acetone on one of those clean pieces of cloth I had sitting over here earlier, or you can use a paper towel, whatever works for you. I'm going to put a little bit of acetone. I always put my caps back on yep, because I'm idea. full of elbows. And I'm going to wipe. See now how you're, really see the edge. Now you're really starting to see the edge. I'm wiping the ink off of the piece, and I don't know if you can see that really well um, as I glint it on the... Oh, I can see it. Oh, that's a good etch. That's a really nice etch. Awesome, awesome. So I'll put that cloth with the acetone over there, and then I'll put this back in here, and I use an old toothbrush, and I have that marked also with Mr. Yuck's sticker, so goodness sake, nobody yeah, ever thinks Yeah, you don't want to use that on your teeth. Now, if you notice, I'm, do I'm doing this away from me so I don't splash towards myself. Smart. Even though this is baking soda solution, Still, and it's not, you know. Could have a little bit of action in it. Yeah, I could have a little bit in it that's still not. I'll and you'd want to be careful, to too, you. that you don't spritz that over into. Right. Actually, it might have been good maybe to put covers on this. I can do that right, right now. now. In fact, Brenda Sue, why don't you do that for me since I, I have do the baking honors. soda on me. Yeah, so that none of this gets over in here because. Good point. Um, and we'll saw that done. Because you could just leave it like this, couldn't you, Kate? What are you doing without gloves on? Oh, duh. Bad girl. Oh, I need beat. Uh-huh. There you go, everybody. There's our, mis our mistake number 15. 
But it's good for you to learn. When you're going to handle this stuff, you put on your gloves. Yeah, I've been bad. Been <laughs> bad. Girl. You've not been bad. Well, anyway, I'm going to put that back in. I'm going to get this next one. I'm going to wipe off any of the black ink. Excuse me. Resist. Thank you, Brenda. And that way, none of that will go in there. Yeah, keep it clean. I'll wipe off the re resist. And I'm going to do that with the large piece too while I'm doing it. So I'm off camera here a minute. Apologize. A little bit more acetone. Well, they're in. getting a ding dang free action lesson, Miss Kate. <laughs> with all the problems worked out, I think they'll wait. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know everything. And y'all, when you get to doing some of this, may find. Oh, so they'll find better out things. But see, that's cuts. just it. You know, that's a part of the process. Yeah. You know, but a lot of this, believe me, guys, she's worked it out for you already. We, once again, you oh, can see the highlight. That's awesome. But your brass is not going to have that yucky look when we're done. So no, no. I'm going to show you how we get that, get that looking even better. So I'm going to scrub it some with my toothbrush some more. And I can mix this around in here and get some, see that Glurp. baking soda goop on there? I just kind of clean it up. Look at it and go, ooh, ah, this is mm -hmm. so pretty. I know. Mm -hmm. It is. It doesn't, no matter how long you put them in the uh, neutralizing so, uh, solution, it's fine. Mm -hmm. So if you're busy doing something else, that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to bring some clean water over here, and I'm going to dump it in the clean water and my fingers because all I have on me is the neutralizer, and I'm not hurting mm -hmm. this water yeah. by doing that. Then I have a handy dandy little wire brush. brush. It looks like a toothbrush, but it's got teeny tiny yeah. um, fine wires on it. And I'm going to really buff over this. Because if I use something like sandpaper or steel wool. It's just going to make marks. Well, not only that, but I'm going to take my edge down. Yes, you I'm will. I found that sanding out. Sanding it. I found that out. Yeah, I'm sanding mm -hmm. on top of it. And I was cleaning the level some of down. mine. I thought, oh, I'll just use some of because I, I have a tendency to use steel wool to clean brass sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then I was getting less edge. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, eh. And don't worry, if you get a hole in your gloves here, just put on, you know, rinse your hand in some water. If you want, put mm -hmm. a little baking soda on your hands and rinse it in the water. And then put a new pair of gloves on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to even just dip this in some baking soda. Oh, look at there. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm liking it. It's coming out real nice. Back in the water she goes. Back in the saddle with me. I'll yeah, do a we can. Yeah, middle. we. It's gonna need a little bit more, but it, you're yeah. getting it. You're getting. You're it. getting so the, the idea. Then they'll see. You yeah, know. you're getting the idea. What you do is you get rid of that. It's not perfect, but you can. Hopefully, what you can see is the. How's that picking up there? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully that didn't work. And this, this is a hand drawn. You know what? Too. Piece. We'll we'll get pictures with the yeah. camera and put it on the blog in the next day or two. Now when you're done, when you're done brushing off and getting rid of the Believe me, it, it's etched very nicely. Crud, cruddy kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You rinse it one final time and while I'm going to put it in there and then mm -hmm. you dry it really well before mm -hmm. you go any further. Now let's do another piece. This one will be a good example to show you how to get rid of that orangey etch it okay. stuff off of there. Somebody sing a tune or something. Gosh, it was too bad. <sighs> I can't sing anymore, so. <laughs> <laughs> you see how handy this little brush is, though? Uh -huh. I love this little You can get those at the dollar store, too. Mm -hmm. I've seen them in some jewelry supplies for as much as $5, but the last time I bought one, I got three for buck twenty-five yeah. or something like that. I still oh, guys. Go, ladies and gentlemen, oh. look at this. Woo look at there. Yeah. 
Now that was done with the stamp. That, that came out great. Isn't that pretty? See, it a little bit. And you have your gloves on. I'm so proud this of you. This way. Came out beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. See if we can get that key real quick because we're getting kind of we're okay. waxing a little bit long. What here. I wanted to show you with the I'm key is thing. that the That's design. Little... Yes, you can. The design is much is a more fine, detailed design, and I wanted to show that even that comes out with a beautiful etch. Mm -hmm. The others you saw were a, a like a... Uh, oh my, that's pretty. Yeah. Can you see that? There's a lot of little French words and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Hopefully on. that comes... So what you can use is a, you can use a torch patina, you can use alcohol inks, you can use paint, uh, black gilder's paste, any number of things that you normally would use for colorization mm -hmm. to go on over that and then turn it color. And then real quick, I'm going to grab my one I'm piece. I'm going to grab that grab the show? Yes. This is one that Kate and I did the first time I etched. Now I've made it into a piece of jewelry. I don't know, Javi, if you can get that without it blurring. Does this come clear? Yeah. This is Bella Vita. This is a Beautiful Life in Italian. Mm -hmm. And then the etch is all up here. What I did is I torch patinaed it. And then I used um, a little bit of dark blue alcohol ink and wiped off. And then I think I did a little bit of Gilder's paste, too. And then it's all sealed with Swellagant clear coat. That's what I did. Beautiful. And it's ready to wear. And it also has some of the little paper beads that we did. Well, they're not paper, but they're tissue decoupage over the cylindrical bead from the website. Mm -hmm. So that's a combination of kind of a rough dark look with some glitz mm -hmm. is very popular now so and a quick couple quick couple of notes about um cleanup um i think we mentioned mentioned earlier there is um material safety data sheets out there regarding what brand of ferric chloride you're using and um, they tell you the proper disposal we are going to keep what we're going to reuse in plastic containers that are marked Properly with Mr. Yuck. With Mr. Yuck and that they're etchant. These we are going to neutralize further with more baking soda. And then we're going to put that in that in an appropriate container and dispose of it according to our local laws. The water can be um, rinsed out and these can be reused. These can be reused if you like. You can reuse these as well. And uh, we put a new plastic bag on the timer. And get rid of our gloves for next time. And, and all of our table covers. And all of our table covers, and even the plastic, because yeah. we have some stuff etchant on that as well. And then you, you know, soap and water wash your toothbrush, and that's it. You're that's it. So guys, was that really so hard? I don't think so. It's a little bit messy, and yes, you should expect that your etching is going to take a little bit of time. But anyone can do this with proper care, a little bit of common sense, and keep safety in mind, and you're going to make some beautiful, beautiful things. So I'll have some close-up pictures on the blog in the next day or two, and we'll show you what we did with them. And we hope that this helps you out a lot. If you need some brass blanks, I have many at bsuboutiques.com. We hope you'll come and visit us, maybe pick up a few for your etching pro projects. And, and this was all brass. And uh, be very careful if you want to etch any other metal. you got to go find, do some research and find, because there's some metals you mustn't ever etch, like, for example, aluminum. We're not going to get into it, but don't ever do Don't aluminum. ever try. Don't ever try it. It's <laughs> bad. Bad news. Make you sick. So anyway, this is Brass, and we hope you had fun. And thanks to Miss Kate for a thank job you. well done. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank my mother, my father. Oh, get out of <laughs> here. the Academy no. Awards of Etching. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.